So this is the same slide as our previous video, and I think that's fitting because we're getting ready to modify this a little bit and talk about what makes the amino acids different. So in the previous discussion, we said that these amino acids have basic building blocks, and here they are drawn on a sheet of paper. You have an NH3+, and a COO-, and a carbon in the center, and a hydrogen. And that stays the same every time that you will draw these amino acids. That stays the same with one exception. We'll look at that one exception when we start looking at these amino acids. Okay, so we looked at these amino groups and we said this is a positive charge and we looked at this negative this carboxylic acid and we said that was a negative charge and this has to happen because this is an acid and this is a base and we're putting it in pH value of 7 because that's what we are so one of these carries a negative charge and one of these carries a positive charge we call this a Zwitter ion a Zwitter ion is a compound that has a negative charge on one atom and a positive charge on another atom. And that's exactly what we have here. So a Zwitter ion is a molecule that has a positive on one and negative on the other. Zwitter actually comes from the old German word that means hermaphrodite. And if you know the definition of a hermaphrodite, then you can kind of look at that and look at this molecule as a hermaphrodite. It has both sex organs, right? So we see a positive charge and a negative charge on it both. So we call that a Zwitter ion. Okay, so Zwitter ions, all amino acids are Zwitter ions. They for the most part, all have a positive and a negative on their molecules. Okay, some other things that we need to talk about before we begin to change things up on you a little bit is this carbon in the center. This carbon in the center has four different groups most of the time. It's got a carboxylic acid group, has a hydrogen up here, has an NH3 down here. And this R group is going to start changing on us because we're not really drawn anything there. But we will start drawing things there and most of the time they will be different. So this carbon is a chiral carbon. And that's important. Anytime we see chirality, just like with sugars, we can see R and S or D and L forms. Depending on your poison, whichever one you like, you can use R and S or D or L. Okay, so I take a look at this carbon and that means I could maybe prioritize these groups and begin to rank them and begin to determine whether these are um, R, right-handed rotation, or S, left-handed rotation. D and L is the same way. D is right-handed, L is left-handed. Well, how do I do that? Well, you do it just like before. You rank them in order of priority. So this is a carbon. This is probably going to be a carbon down here below. This is a nitrogen. This is a hydrogen. So before we really start ranking them, we'll draw our very first one and we'll explain how you can prioritize them as R, S, D, or L. But that theory never goes away. It's the systematic procedure that you've always learned. It doesn't really change. But this is a chiral carbon. And because of that chiral carbon, we do get some stereochemistry that's involved. At biological activity, we looked at carbohydrates and we said carbohydrates are right-handed. So carbohydrates typically are D's, D-glucose, D-galactose, D-fructose. We kept seeing D's in these charts. And it looks like Mother Nature would be consistent. And when we get to amino acids, it looks like amino acids would be right-handed as well. But you know what? She's not consistent. She's tricky like that. you got to watch out for Mother Nature. She always tries to keep you on your toes. And with amino acids, that's what she's done. 
because she said, well, sugars, I like right-handed, so I want these sugars involved in your processes that you do on a daily basis. But you know what? Just to try to change things up a little bit, I'm going to take these amino acids and I'm going to pick the left-hand versions of them and see how you like that. So try to keep that straight, why don't you? And that's exactly what's happened. So most of the amino acids that we use on a daily basis are L forms. There's no rhyme or reason. We can't really figure it out. Other than Mother Nature wanting to be spiteful, we can't really explain the concept or why she chose left-handed forms of amino acids and right-handed forms of sugars. Why didn't they just choose right-handed down the board or left-handed down the board? We simply just do not understand it. It could just be random. It could be maybe uh, a theory behind it. We just simply don't know. So all of the amino acids that we will study, that we can use, that we metabolize, that actually have a purpose, most of those amino acids are going to be L-amino acid forms. So very, very careful. And that will be a test question. You know that that's coming, right? Carbohydrates are Ds. Amino acids are Ls. Okay, so there's a little bit of chirality lesson for you again. It's coming back. You thought you got away from it, didn't you? What else can we talk about this foundation of the structure? Uh, this is a carboxylic acid, and we said that carboxylic acids, the carbon that's next door, is called the alpha carbon. And this is also called the alpha carbon as well. That doesn't go away either. So very often you're going to hear us talk about the alpha carbon in amino acids, and that's the alpha carbon in amino acids. So it's that center carbon that's the chiral carbon in this case as well, but it's that carbon that's next door to that carbonyl. So we called that alpha back in the day, and we still call it alpha now. So that doesn't go away either. All right, so what we can say is that an amino acid is a carboxylic acid group with an ammonium group attached to the same alpha carbon. Now I'm going to repeat that sentence again because I want you to understand it. It's a carboxylic acid group and a ammonium group, right? nh 3 is ammonium, attached to an alpha carbon. All right, so that's kind of the foundation at least. Now, with this foundation, we can begin to modify. So let's begin to modify this structure. I'm going to look at this R group here, and this is what makes all the amino acids different. All of this stays the same up here at the top, but I can switch this to an H. And if I switch that to a hydrogen, I have my first amino acid that I have to memorize. This amino acid, however, is not chiral. And the reason that it's not chiral is because this carbon has two hydrogens on it. So this is not a chiral carbon. That means it does not have a D or a L form at all. It comes to you in one form and that is it. The name of that amino acid is glycine. And there's a three-letter abbreviation that's G-L-Y, and there's a one-letter abbreviation of a G. So these are the things that we need you to memorize on the amino acids. There's the structure of the amino acid. This one's not chiral. It's the only one that's not chiral, by the way. Glycine is the name of that amino acid. We can put an IUPAC name on it if we want, but it goes by a common name, and that common name is called glycine. The first three letters, G-L-Y, is the three-letter abbreviation, and the first letter, G, is the one-letter abbreviation. Very simple, very straightforward as far as how all of those three components match up and work out with each other. But it's not going to be as simple as that most of the time. There's going to be some trickiness involved. You know it's coming. 
So in the next video, we'll continue on with our second amino acid, and we will truck on through quite a number of them. So again, my advice is to take a look at this structure, begin to draw this structure down on a sheet of paper, draw glycine five times, make sure that you understand how these things hook up, write down glycine, make sure you can spell it correctly because that will be graded, make sure you know the three letter and the one letter abbreviations. So the next video will continue on with these amino acids. One's down, we have 19 more to go. Oh gosh, can you believe it? 19 more amino acids. It's not going to be fun, but it's something that we've got to drag our feet through at least in order to get through to the end.